I realized the other day that there was one topic I should have done a video on by now, and that's averages. I've done a video on medians, but not actually means or averages. And it's time for me to rectify that issue and give you what you deserve. My top tips for dealing with averages. To be honest, it just boils down to one key trick that we're gonna repeat several times in this video across three different questions. You need to know averages for the GRE and the GMAT, so stay tuned to the very end because things get a bit harder as it progresses. Thank you for watching. This is the trick. Always multiply the average by the number of terms to find the sum. Many, many times in the GRE and GMAT, you're gonna be given an average and I want you to multiply that average by the number of terms in the group to find the sum. You're probably very used to the following formula on the top. The average is just the sum divided by the number of terms. You add up all the terms, that's the sum, and then divide by the number of terms to get the average. But what many students don't think of doing is of rearranging that formula so the average times the number of terms equals the sum. And this is tested relentlessly in the GRE and the GMAT. It might seem fairly obvious, but I can count by the hundred the number of students I've worked with who didn't quite get an average question right because they didn't follow the following steps. Let's test this tip out on the question above. Kim scored an average of 500 points on her first three tests. After her fourth test, her average jumped to 550. What did Kim score in her fourth test? No need for a complex formula. We're just going to multiply the average by the number of terms. Kim had an average of 500 points, and that's across three tests. So we multiply 500 by three to find her total number of points, the sum of her points of those three tests, 1,500. But then she takes a fourth test and her average jumps to 550. That's the new average. So can you tell me the new total? We would do the average 550 times the number of terms, which at this point is now four, because she's done four tests, and that would give us the new total. 550 times four is 2,200, and that's the new total. And then all we have to do is the new total minus the old total to find out what she got on that fourth test, which was 700. The 700 on her fourth test brought her average up from 500 to 550. And the way we got that was always by multiplying the average by the number of terms to find the sum. I think it's not only the easiest way to answer these average questions, it's also the quickest. So let's get on to a second example, which is from an official question. If n is the average, brackets, arithmetic mean, and they often put those brackets for some reason in the GMAT and the GRE, they put the bracket arithmetic mean, I guess to clarify that they don't mean median. I've done a separate video on medians. When they say average, they mean mean. If n is the average of the three numbers, six, nine, and k, what is the value of k in terms of n? It starts to get a bit confusing, doesn't it? Unless we follow our method, and then it's not. They've told us the average is n. So we're gonna automatically, without really thinking why, we're gonna multiply that by the number of terms to find the total. There are three terms, three numbers here. So n, the average, times three gives us the sum or the total. n times three is three n. And now we can write a simple equation we know that the sum or the total of these three terms equals 3n. 
So we write 6 plus 9 plus k must equal 3n. All we have to do now is rearrange that to find k in terms of n. When they ask that, they mean that they want the k on its own with all the other stuff on the other side. So 6 plus 9 is 15, and then bring that 15 across by subtracting it from both sides, and we get k equals 3n minus 15, which is a. Now, I don't know about you, but that question sounded quite complicated when I first read it. And I was like, what are they asking? How would I start with that? And many students would get confused or they might pick numbers. But if we focus exclusively on this method of multiplying the average by the number of terms, even if we don't quite understand how that's going to help us, then we'll get there quickly and easily. I can barely think of a question having done hundreds of average questions where the sum or the total isn't useful. So let's apply this new idea, this new philosophy to one more question that I've got coming up. This one I prepared earlier. Again, it's an official question. If the average brackets arithmetic mean of three distinct integers is 37, and the least integer is 18, which of the following could be the greatest integer? Indicate all such values. Now, this is a harder question, so feel free to pause the video and try yourself. It's not an easy one. Even with my amazing trick, it's still fairly challenging towards the end, so try your best or just wait to see my explanation. What's our first step? You probably guessed it. We're going to multiply the average by the number of terms to find the total. The average is 37 and the number of terms or the number of numbers is 3. 37 times 3 is 111. Now at this point, we want to create an equation. All the terms added up equals 111, except there are two terms we don't know. We don't know the middle term, so to speak, and we don't know the greatest term. We do know that the least term is 18. So at this point, we're going to have to crack out some algebra because there are two different terms that we don't know, and we have to give them a name. Otherwise, how can we write an equation? So let's crack out an X and a Y to give us the following equation. We can all agree that 18 is the least term, and then x is like the middle term, and y is the greatest term, the greatest integer, which is actually what we're looking for. Funnily enough, we can now take away 18 from both sides to make it look even easier. x plus y is 93. And again, x is like the middle term, if you want, and y is the greatest term. Now, at this point, you do have one quirky option. If y is the greatest integer, you could just try out each of the answers that they've given you and see if it works. And that will give you the correct answers. For example, you can eliminate a, the greatest integer can't be 40, because if we put 40 into that equation as y, x will turn out to be 53. And yet that would make x the greatest integer, not 40. So we can rule out 40. And like that, you could work your way through the answers. It's not so fancy, but it would work. Or we can be a bit smarter. If x is that middle term, let's pick some extreme values. The smallest we can make x is not 18, because did you notice the word distinct in the question? That means each number has to be different. So we can't make it 18, but we can make it 19. If x was 19, then we could subtract 19 from both sides and get 74. So the minimum for x would be 19, making the maximum for y 74. So we know 74 is possible and we can eliminate 77. So that's the upper limit for y. But what's the lower limit for y? Can you think of how we'd find a lower limit for y, which is the greatest integer? 
the lower limit for y would be if y was practically the same as x. Because remember, y has to be just one greater than x. They can't be the same because then it wouldn't be the greatest integer. And also, the numbers need to be distinct. So if x and y were basically the same number, that would be just below the lower limit for y. If x and y were the same number, you would have like 2y equals 93, or essentially you divide 93 by 2 to find that lower limit. 93 divided by 2 is 46.5. But both x and y can't be 46.5, not only because it's a decimal, but also because they can't be the same number. So y would have to be at least 47, making x 46. And then y is distinct from x and bigger than x. And therefore the lower limit for y would be 47, eliminating both a and b. So the answers would be c, d, and e. As I say, that was a relatively hard question, but we got most of the way there just using that simple trick. We multiplied the average by the number of terms to find the total. Taking away 18 from both sides, after we'd set up the equation, which you always have to do, gives you x plus y equals 93. Or you could have written middle plus greatest equals 93. At that point, you could pick numbers for y, and that honestly would work, and some people would prefer that. Or you can focus on this theoretical approach. But either way, underpinning everything is this idea that you multiply the average, brackets, arithmetic mean, by the number of terms to find the total. I hope you now love averages as much as I do. Thank you for making it to the end of the video and see you in the next one.